Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about different data types in MongoDB. We're also gonna talk about inserting records into the database. So in the last tutorial, we set up a collection called students. So over here, we have our collection draft.students. So draft is the database name and students is the collection name. And we have our little interface over here. So over here, I have my terminal. It's my command prompt, it's basically where I'm gonna be uh, inputting all of the commands to MongoDB. And then over here, we have Mongo Compass, which is like a graphical user interface. And I also wanna show you guys uh, one other thing I have set up over here. So here I have a text editor. And what I'm gonna be doing is, is I'm gonna be using this text editor to show you guys all of the different MongoDB commands that we're gonna be using. Now, one of the bad things about the you know command prompt and having to use the command prompt is that it's kind of a, a boring interface, you know what I mean? It's not really readable. And I'm gonna be showing you guys a lot of different things we can do with MongoDB. And so when I use the text editor over here, it'll do like syntax highlighting and it'll just be a lot easier for us to see what the different commands are that I'm typing out. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be typing out MongoDB commands over here in the text editor, and then I'm just gonna be copying them and pasting them over here into the command prompt to actually execute them. That way it's just a little bit easier for us to see. So the first thing that I wanna show you guys are all the different data types that we can use with MongoDB. So in any sort of database, you're just storing different information. And so the question becomes, what types of information can we store? And MongoDB actually uses a language called BSON. And BSON is very similar to JSON. Uh, if you've ever used JSON before, it's basically an object notation. Um, it, it allows us to define like little documents, right? So we can define like key value pairs and we can use all different uh, things. So here I'm gonna show you guys some of the different data types that BSON supports. So uh, over here, we just have a basic object and the object is denoted using these open and close curly brackets. And then inside of here, I have some key value pairs, just kind of demonstrating the different data types. So we have like a string, which is a string of text, integer, which is a whole number, a double, which is just a decimal number. We have Booleans, so that can be true or false. We also have arrays, and so arrays can hold any of the other data types, but it can hold a collection. So here we just have these open and close square brackets. Uh, and then we have an object, so we can actually store objects inside of objects, stuff like that. So this object has a few different key value pairs. We can also represent dates, and so a date would be like a date and time. You can just say new date, and then inside of parentheses, you can put four digit year, two digit month, two digit day and you can store object IDs. So an object ID is actually something that we'll look at in a sec when we start inserting data into the database. But an object ID is basically just a special identifier for specific entries in the database. And then you can also have no value, which is null. And then there are a few other additional uh, data types. So you can do like a timestamp, you can store binary data, you can store regular expressions, and you can store JavaScript code. So hopefully this gives you guys a good idea of all the different data types. I think these are probably the most uh, basic, most common data types and the data types that we're gonna be using in this course. So now that we've taken a look at uh, some of the different data types, I wanna talk to you guys about inserting information into a specific collection. So all information in MongoDB is gonna to have to go in a collection, right? We can set up collections, which are basically little uh, con containers. They're similar to tables if you're familiar with relational databases, but they're basically just used to store uh, related information. And so I'm going to show you guys how we can insert information into a collection. So we have our student collection and uh, you can see over here at draft.students. So we're going to be storing some different students, right? Maybe this is a database to store uh, students at a college or something. So I can just say db dot, and then I want to type of the collection name. So it's going to be students. And then I can say dot insert one. And insert one is a special function that we can use, which will allow us to insert one single record into the collection. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert an object. So I'm gonna make an open and close curly bracket, just like that. And inside of here, I can start typing out the different object attributes or the different key value pairs. So why don't we give the student a name? We can just name this student Jack and we'll give the student a major. So let's say maybe Jack is a biology major. And then finally, why don't we give him a GPA? So it was a GPA is 3.5. So basically what I did is I said db.students.insert1. And then inside of parentheses, I placed the record or the object that I want to enter into the database. And you can see I'm using the string data type and I'm also using the double data type um, for all that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna copy this because again, I have to insert these commands over here on the command prompt. So I'm gonna paste this in and then I'm just gonna hit enter and you'll see that we get this message over here. It says, acknowledge true inserted ID object ID. So 
we actually inserted a record into the database, which was pretty cool. All right, so let's take a look. Why don't we go over to Mongo Compass and we'll see if that record got inserted. So what I can do over here is I can just click this refresh button and this should actually show me the record. So there's two ways that we can see uh, each object in the database. We can go to a list view like this and this will just view it like a normal object and we can do the table view, which will view it like a more traditional database table. And both of those, you know, depending on how you wanna visualize the data, it can be useful. Now, I want you guys to notice over here that we have one extra attribute. So we have the name major and GPA, which is, you know, what we expected, but we also have this underscore ID, and this is the object ID. So this is basically a unique identifier for the specific entry in the collection. Now, we didn't specify underscore ID as one of the attributes of the object object that we inserted and therefore MongoDB went ahead and created an attribute for us. And this is that object ID data type that I was talking to you guys about a minute ago. So if you don't specify a custom ID for a specific entry into the collection, MongoDB will generate one for you and it'll make sure that it's unique. But if you want, you can actually include your own ID. So why don't we try to do that? Let's add in another student. So I'm actually gonna add in another student over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this. So why don't we name this student Claire and let's make Claire a marketing major and how about she has a GPA of 3.7. So if I wanted now, I can add in this other entry, but I could put a custom ID. So I could say underscore ID, and over here we could give Claire an ID. So why don't we give Claire an ID of like two? And so now when I insert Claire into the database, she's gonna have a custom ID of two, and she's not gonna have one of those long uh, IDs like Jack had. And what we can also do is we can insert extra attributes. So MongoDB has a very flexible database schema. It's not like a traditional relational database where uh, you have to like rigorously define what each column is going to be. In MongoDB, you can pretty much just insert anything into a particular collection. And you know it's really up to the user to kind of make sure that everything is consistent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in another attribute. I'm actually just gonna put this on a new line so it's a little bit more readable for us. So why don't we also give this student an awards array? So I'm gonna say awards, and this will basically store all the different awards that this student got. So maybe this student is the valedictorian and maybe the student is also graduated like summa cum laude or something, right? So they have these two awards that are associated to them. So even though I didn't include awards up here on Jack, who's a biology major, for Claire, who's a marketing major, I could add in this awards uh, attribute, no problem. Again, MongoDB is flexible enough to be able to handle that. And also we're adding in a custom ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And I'm actually just gonna come over here and we'll paste this in, I'm gonna hit enter and you'll see we get this acknowledged truth, which means we insert it into the database. Now let's take a look over here. I'm gonna refresh and you'll see we have our Claire entry. So Claire had an ID of two. So she had a custom ID and she also had this uh, awards array. So this is kind of interesting. And if we go over to the table view, you'll see that the table view accommodated the awards uh, section, right? So Claire has two awards whereas Jack had none. So that's basically how we can uh, go ahead and enter students into the database. And I'm gonna show you guys just a couple more examples of inserting students so we can get a good idea. So I'm actually just gonna paste a couple of these in just so we don't have to spend time typing them out. And you guys will kind of see different ways that we can do this. All right, so here I just pasted in another student and this was just one that I kind of had already written out. So this student has a name, he's Evan. His major is astronomy. He has a GPA of 3.7 and he has a grades array. So this student, we're actually storing different grades that they've gotten, and this grades array has a bunch of different grades in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this one, and we'll insert Evan into the database. And I'm also going to insert two more students. So I'm gonna paste them in down here. So here we have two more students. We have one, Kate, who's a sociology major, GPA 3.2. And Kate actually has a contact attribute. So Kate has this uh, attribute contact. So this would be like contact information that we could use to contact her. And you'll see this is actually an object in itself. So here we have like the phone number and we have her email. So this would be like information that we could use to contact Kate. And then we also have Phil, who's a chemistry major, and Phil has a start date attribute. So this could be like an attribute that says when he started at the school, right? So we, to create a date, we could just say new date, 
And then it looks like Phil started in 2012 uh, in August 23rd. So what I can do is I could paste these two guys over there in the command line and we can get them into the database as well. So there's Kate and then let's also do the same thing with Phil. All right, so we added both of those guys into the database and let's go check out how it looks here on Compass. So here you'll see that we have our three new entries, Evan, Kate, and Phil, and they all have different majors. But when we go over here, and this is on the table view, you'll notice that all of these guys have different attributes. So like this person has an array or a grades array. Um, this person has a contact object. This person has a start date. So if we look over here in the list, like. All of these are still in the same collection, but some of them are just a little bit different. Now, most of them have name, major, and GPA, but then some of them have like different things. And you'll notice that objects got added in for all of these. And what's cool about this compass thing is you can kind of just go through and look at all this stuff. So like I could come down here and look at this contact object and we could see like, okay, Kate, who's a sociology major, has a phone number of 333 and has an email of this email, right? So that's basically how we can uh, enter in individual students into the collection. I also wanna show you guys one more thing we can do, which instead of just inserting one student, we could insert many students at once. So again, I'm just gonna paste something in over here just so we can see how it works. So over here, we were using this insert one function and insert one will allow us to insert one entry into the database, one object. But we also have this other function, insert many, and insert many is really useful because basically instead of just inserting one, we could insert uh, an array of objects. So you see over here, I have this array. It starts with these open and closed uh, square brackets. And then inside of here, I have like this object. And then inside of here, I have this other one. So we're inserting Mike, who's a computer science major, and Andrea, who's a math major. And Andrea also has this same awards array, just like one of the students up there. So you can use insert many when you wanna insert many records, or you can use insert one when you just wanna insert one. And when you use insert many, they're all just gonna be in an array. So I can do the same thing. I'm gonna copy this over here, and we'll go ahead and paste it in the command line, and I'll hit enter. And so now you'll notice when I inserted many, it says inserted IDs and it gives us the information about the different uh, students that got entered into the database. And again, it's just gonna auto generate those IDs for us, but if we wanted, we could uh, customize those. So now if we refresh this table, you'll see that we have those two. So we now have Andrea and Mike, both of which have their IDs, and then Andrea has some awards down here. All right, so that is basically, you know, everything that you need to know about inserting records. I mean, inserting is pretty easy. Again, MongoDB has a flexible database schema. So you could, you know, you don't have to enter in like the same stuff every time, right? If I wanted to add uh, a start date for one particular student, I could do that without doing it with uh, all the other ones. So inserting is really great. And uh, if you're familiar with like JSON or if you're familiar with like JavaScript objects, and that's essentially what we're doing here. I mean, these are basically just like JavaScript objects that we're inserting into MongoDB, although they're technically like BSON objects, like I told you guys. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.